church tonight. We appreciate everyone that's here. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask Him to bless this service. Would you pray with me, dear Lord? We're grateful tonight for all that you do for us. Lord, you're so good to us, Lord. Your word tells us, Jesus, there that if you got an ear to hear, hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Lord, just open our ears, our spiritual ears tonight, God, to hear what you would have to say. Bless this service in Jesus' name. Amen. Clap your hands to him again. We're glad you're here tonight. We're glad to have our guest with us tonight. Appreciate him. Amen. God is good. Amen. How many of knows God's good? All the time. It's us that's not good. God's good. It's us that's not holy. God's holy. It's us that's not pure sometimes. It's God that's pure. Amen. I love him. What about you? Let's worship the Lord as they sing tonight. I'm so thankful tonight that God's blood has been applied to my heart and my life. So we're going to sing glory to his name. Oh, down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where for cleansing from sin I cried. Oh, there to my heart was the blood of God. Oh, Lord. Like the little widow woman and, and like the woman taken in adultery. 
and like the, you know, this and, and, and others, or like the Pharisee that, that went up in the sycamore tree, and, and, and like the Apostle Paul that was knocked to the ground uh, and, and heard a voice speak to him. And on and on and on the story goes where people come to, come to, come to the Lord, and but not one place do you find where he turned them down. He never turned them down. He just, he, he, and, and he went on to say just to suffer the little children to come unto him and forbid them not for of such is the kingdom of God. Ain't you thankful for him tonight? Amen. He's so good. He's so good. We receive our evening offering and you give and they'll bless us with another song maybe here. And you give as uh, if you have to give and just give it as if you was giving it to the Lord. And uh, I heard a man say one time, he said, well, if the Lord comes down, I'll give it to him. Well, he probably would. He probably would. If you won't, if you won't give, if you don't, you know, if you don't, well, never. never. I'll, I'll cover that in the sermon. Brother Scott, would you pray, please? Thank you,
with me, if you would. 90th chapter of the book of Psalms. God is so good, so real. Praise the Lord. Sister Creasy, when we, when I get finished, I got a special song I want you to sing for the all. So, just a closer one. Verse 1 of Psalms chapter 9, it said, Lord, Thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. I like it. I like it when He includes all generations. It's kind of like that positive traction I talk about a lot. You have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever Thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, Thou art God. Hallelujah. Don't that sound beautiful? Thou art God. My subject is our dwelling place. Lay your Bibles down if you would as they sing me a chorus of that song. Lift your hands. Thank you, Lord. I could depend on him in a time of need. When I need him, he's always there. The comfort or the discomfort of our lives depends on our dwelling place. For, the, uh, for our dwelling place of our body. What makes us comfort or comfortable depends on the dwelling of our bodies where we dwell. Amen. We make ourselves comfortable or uncomfortable. We do everything that we possibly can to have a home that's comfortable yes, sir. and comfortable notes. Particularly a comfortable note. House paint and other notes. We want it warm. And uh, we want it cool. And sometimes we get mixed up which is which. I guess that depends. We want a comfortable place. We want our own home. We want our own bed. Good, warm, soft bed. And we want good food. Or at least we want food. And we want all the things that makes for a comfortable home. Called, and, and that's our dwelling place. That's where we dwell. And so if we're going to live there, we want it comfortable. It don't have to be fancy to be comfortable. It doesn't have to be a multi-million dollar home to be comfortable. That little old place, that 6315 Holly Road, is not quite multi-million dollar. But it is comfortable. It's got everything that we need to help us to be comfortable. And our spiritual man is the same way. We do everything, we should do everything we possibly can to make our spiritual man spiritually comfortable. We should, we should not be uncomfortable in our own home. And we should not be uncomfortable with our walk with God. Our walk with God ought to be a comfortable walk with God. And we ought to do everything we possibly can to see to it that that happens. We ought to be in church. We ought to be in the worship. When We ought to clap our hands with the clappers. We ought to stomp our feet with the stompers. 
We ought to sing with the choir or the praise singers. Right. We ought to do everything. And, and when the preacher's preaching, we ought to at least give him a good Baptist nod. Yeah. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And we ought to do everything that we can to make our spiritual man comfortable. Yes. To keep uh, and to have and how we get comfortable is when we make God our dwelling place. See, a dwelling place is where you live. That's where you live. That's my dwelling. That's not where I visit. I mean, I live there. I sleep there every night. I go there. I get up there every morning and. And I go, and I go, and I, I may get tied up, and sometimes I run into myself coming back. And, and, and I get all, you know, I get on the bus, I drive the bus, get off the bus, put my suit on, go to Memphis, to the hospital, stay as long as I can, leave the hospital, come back, put my blue jeans back on, drive the bus, come back. And sometimes I run over myself, but I'm, I'm trying to do this to make myself comfortable with my walk with God. I dwell there. That's my house. And the scripture said that God is our dwelling place. God is where we live with God. God lives in us and we live in God. And, and that He's our dwelling. And we need to try to make ourselves... And, and the, the comfort or the discomfort of us as far as our spiritual walk depends totally upon us. You know, it's got nothing to do with where you sit in the church. It's got nothing to do with, with who you sit beside. It's got nothing. You can sit beside Satan himself. But if you've got your mind made up, you're going to be a comfortable, and you're going to have a comfortable spirit, and you're going to love God, and you're going to serve God. Nothing will stand in your way. Nothing. Or nobody. And so it, it depends on us how comfortable we are or how uncomfortable we are. It's a shame when you go to the house of God and feel uncomfortable. Wow. You know, if anywhere you ought to feel comfortable, it ought to be two places. It ought to be in your own home and in the church. Right. That's where you ought. You may be uncomfortable on your job. You know, if you was in jail, you'd probably be uncomfortable. <laughs> probably your bed wouldn't be near as soft. But if anywhere you ought to be comfortable, now I'm going somewhere, is in the house of God and in your dwelling, because in the house of God is where God dwells. We dwell in God. God dwells in us. I'm God's kid. You're God's kid. God loves us. Our dwelling place is where we live. As I said, it's not where I visit. And when we, uh, and when we at church, we, we, we don't just visit church. We dwell here. If them doors are open, I'm going to be here unless something serious is wrong. I know there's sickness. I understand that. I'm not, I'm not talking about that. But it's, it's where I, I don't come to visit. Oh, Brother Heron had a good saying. I quote him a lot, but I sit under him a lot, so I, I've got a right to quote him. He used to say, you don't visit home. You live there. We, he had someone come by the church and that had been there for years, maybe, and had left. And they'd make some kind of statement, I'm glad to be back home. And he'd say, you don't visit home. You dwell here. That's the way the house of God is. We do all that we can to make ourselves comfortable in our home and in our church and, and living for God. Living for God is a comfortable life. That's where our soul is. It needs a comfortable dwelling place. To do that, you have to be a you have to be a prayer warrior. You have to be a worshiper. You have to be now. That that doesn't mean you got to do like everybody else. I'm not implying you don't have to. You know, uh, some some dance and some run the aisles and 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 that's good and and. When, when I can, I try to run with whoever's running. And, and they make two laps, I make one. And, and uh, all like that. And, but but it, it ought to be something that we do. It's just us. And that's why. Let me tell you something. Why there's so many Christians that can't settle down and live for God daily on an everyday basis 
without seemingly losing victory every day. Let me tell you why. They're not in the dwelling place. they only visiting God. Amen. I know that's tight. That's right. But that's right. Yeah. He's my dwelling place. I want to be here. I'm not here because someone made me come. I want to be here. I'm doing what I want to do. He's become my dwelling place. The Lord said He, he has been our dwelling place in all generations. God loves His church. Is He your living where you're living? You in Him and Him in you, your dwelling place. Or do you just kind of visit God? Good question, preacher. I'll try to answer it. The psalmist said of the children of Israel, speaking of them, that they had wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. In hunger, in thirst, their soul fainted in them. When we're not in God's dwelling, our soul faints within us. It's nothing more miserable than a child of God that's about two-thirds backslid. That's a miserable state to be in. About two-thirds out of the will of God. He makes you miserable and everybody around you miserable. And so he said, that they hungered and they thirst and their soul fainted within them. When we're when we don't get involved in, in, in the house of in, in the house of God and with God, when we're not involved, then then, then we're miserable and and I can't I, I, I just can't I remember I, I just can't sit still. They played a DVD of some of our services in the high school at Munford. People were tell, talking to me about it. And one lady just asked me, said, why do you walk so much when you preach? I said, why, why do you not walk? She said, you go everywhere preaching. I said, well, i got to make sure everybody hears me. I can't sit still. There's something inside of me. The prophet called it a fire in my bones or in his bones. I'm talking about God and you dwelling together. And this writer said they wandered in city, not having no cities to dwell in. Many today are just wandering spiritually in a wilderness, a spiritual wilderness, and have no city to dwell in, hunger and thirsty. I'm not I'm talking about a spiritual walk now. I'm not talking about the natural. I'm talking about the spiritual man. But I feel that God, I feel like God has given me an invitation. These last two or three weeks have been, been great for me. And, and when I see the praise singers praising and singing like they were the last couple, especially the last two Sunday nights, Sunday morning also for that matter, when I see that happening and, and, and the choirs were singing or the choir was singing and young people coming, just nobody giving an invitation. Sister Creasy, the first Sunday morning, two Sundays ago, be three Sundays this Sunday, just got up and walked down to the front while the choir was singing and began to worship. And when she did that, the youth, some of the youth just began to follow and some of the adults began to follow and, and just swarmed around the altar. That, that was the Sunday that I got paid for nothing. Y'all didn't let me preach. You remember. That's what I'm talking about. Our dwelling place. That's what I'm in reference to when the, the Spirit of God begins to move and, and, and nobody wants to sit down. This, this church, let me tell you something, the last two or three weeks, particularly Sunday morning, Sunday night, uh, the last, this will be the third weekend in a row, and I'm expecting even greater, that have not even wanted to quit. You didn't want to quit praying. 
People got getting the Holy Ghost. One was over here getting the Holy Ghost. Some was over here receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Nobody wanted to quit. I've read about it. I've heard about it. I've heard preachers talk about it, but now I've seen it. I saw people here in this church, and many of you, that you didn't want to back up. You, you, you had found a dwelling. You, you just wanted to stay there. That's what I'm talking about. You got comfortable with it. Somebody asked me one time, said, where you rather do a funeral? I said, I'd rather not. But if I, if I, go, if I got my rathers, I'd rather do it right here in this pulpit. You know why? Because I'm comfortable in this pulpit. This has been my pulpit for 39, almost 39 years. I'm comfortable here. Man. That's the way I want to be with the Lord, Brother Rush. I want to be comfortable with Him. Right. Right. I don't mean I want to be so familiar with Him I get, I get careless. I don't mean that, but I want to be comfortable. I want me and God on the same, on the same page. I want good talking terms with Him. I want, I want to be confident in God enough that when I say Jesus, He listens. That's what I'm talking about. Amen. When I say, Lord, I need you, he, He's there. That's what I'm talking about. I'm going to be comfortable with that. I'm going to be comfortable enough that I know when I pray, God hears my prayer. Amen. And I know I want to be comfortable enough when I worship, God appreciates my worship. I hope I'm making sense tonight. Let me see here. What else I'm going to talk about? I like the song she sang talking about abiding. I like that because Jesus said if you abide in me and I'll abide in you. It's a 50-50 ordeal. I really believe if I know him I believe he'll go 90-10. I really believe he would. You abide, I'll abide. There's a blessing in abiding in that dwelling place. I'd rather go home than anywhere else. When this service is over tonight and I eat me a hamburger or something, I'm going home. Lord willing, I'm going to go home and sleep in my bed tonight. Because I'm, I'm comfortable with that. I hope I'm making sense to you. There's a blessing in just being able to say, I, Jesus abides in me and I'm abiding in Him. Once you've tasted the Lord, you're never comfortable away from Him. I feel like this church has stepped into a, to a, a, a new degree of worship. Yes. I really do. I'm not just saying that. Yeah. You're not saying, preacher, you're saying we're not going to have any dry spells. No, I didn't say that. There's always dry spells. Always part of Always, that's right. It's part of it. But I feel like we stepped in, and I believe once we've tasted of what we've been tasting of, we're not going to be satisfied right. somewhere else. Right. Right. Somebody put it like this. If you ever get in the fire, you're not satisfied in the smoke. That's, the way I, that's what I'm in reference to. David said, my soul longer, my soul longer, ready, yea, even fainter for thy court, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cried out for the living God. David also said these words, the Lord is my rock. He's my fortress. He's my protector. He's my butler. He's my deliverer. The God of my rock, in Him will I trust. He's my shield and the horn of my salvation. He just, I mean, I think, I think the psalmist is covering just about everything in this reading. He wrote, he's my salvation. He's my high tower. He's my refuge. He's my savior. Thou savest me from violence. God is all and all to me. What about you? I want to dwell with him. I don't want to just visit with him. I want him to call me his son. I want him to recognize. You know, one writer said something about that he sticks closer than a brother. I never ever read that or quote that with I don't think of the Scott boys. Them, them brother, now they may fight like cats and dogs, but I'm going to tell you, they're close men. Those guys have breakfast like on every Saturday morning together. They have 
supper every Thursday night together. And I don't know how much in between they do. You know why? Because they're a close-knit family. That's how I want to be with God. He sticks us closer than a brother. As close as they are, as close as Stanley and, and, and Roger and, and Ron and Don and, and uh, the others, whoever they are. Jeff, somebody else. Don. All right. As close as they are, there's one sticks closer than that. He's called Jesus. So he's my salvation. He's my dwelling place. And he's my fortress, my high tower, my rock, and my refuge. A fortress is a place of safety. I can run to him whenever I need him. He's there. Whatever I need, God is there. You say, does God answer all your prayers? Yes, sir, every one of them. A lot of times it's no, but I get an answer. Somebody asked me the other day, standing right here the other night, why don't God heal me? I said, I don't have that answer. I don't know. I, can't, I don't dictate God. I just do good to keep up with it. But I can tell you this, He's a prayer answer God. He's a healer. He's a deliverer. He's a devil disturber. Demons tremble at the sound of His name. When you say Jesus, you said everything that pertains to salvation. There's none other name under heaven given among men whereby you must be saved. When you say Jesus Christ, you said everything. He's my rock, the psalmist said. It means my, it, he's my dwelling place. He, he's my safe place. He, he's my secure. He keeps me safe and secure from the enemy. He won't let the devil go any further than what he allows him to go. The devil said, have you, uh, have you, uh, Jesus said, God said, have you considered Job? He said, yeah, but you've got a band around him. He said, I can't get to him. I can't touch him. But if you take the, you, you, you take the shield down, I'll make him curse you to your face. And, and he tried it, but it didn't work. You know why? Because he was Job's security. When Mrs. Job said, curse God and die, he said, you talk foolish. You talk like a foolish woman. And then he asked a question. He said, what? Can a man receive good at the hand of God and not evil? The scripture said, with all this, he never once charged God foolish. It never said he didn't wonder. It never said he didn't, and within his mind, wonder what was going on. But he never charged God foolishly. For in the time of trouble, he said, David did, he will hide me in his pavilion. It means that he, he puts me in a safe, secure place from my enemy. He that dwelleth, the psalmist said, in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Isn't that awesome? The psalmist said in 91 and 4, He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buck. I like what the psalm said of uh, uh, Sister Priscilla Magruder saying, See, I've been blood bought. I've been hell fought. But I've been truth taught. Blood bought, hell fought, blood bought, and truth taught. When, you, when you've been taught the truth, nothing else will do. You will never, ever, ever leave this church, this uh, apostolic doctrine, and set up another doctrine in truth because you've heard the truth. There's something about the truth. Now watch. By many times we refuse to allow God to help us. We, we take things upon ourselves as to speak. Watch what Matthew 23 and verse 37 said. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stoneth them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings. Watch. And ye would not. We have to abide in that dwelling place. That's our, our part. 
It's like uh, in this baptism uh, ordeal. Okay? The other night, the youth leader uh, baptized, uh, was it two young people the other night? Two. He did his part. That's what he was supposed to do. God does his part. God saves them. We baptize unto repentance, but God baptizes with the Spirit. That's God's vision. That's what God does. Gather that, but ye would not. So why don't we just trust God? Put our confidence in the Lord. So we want to ask, how, how do we get into that divine dwelling place? It's, this is so simple. You ready? You just move in. Just walk in. Just like they walked in here the other morning. Remember that? They just walked in to that dwelling place. It's, it's not a hard thing. God's not a hard God. Ben, I've heard all about you. If God could save you and me, He'd save anybody. I've heard. I know. All we got to do is just be honest and be truthful. We don't have to quote a sinner's prayer as, as some say. We just got to be honest with God. Jesus, I need you. And Jesus is that. Just, just, just that simple. Just move right in. Repent of your sins. Be baptized in His name. Receive the Holy Ghost. And dwell there. Stay right there. The lease is already paid. The rent's taken care of. Everything is squared away. All we have to do is just take take control and just, just take uh, 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 and, and dwell there and be there. Jesus said, "Abide in me." That was the verse I was wanting, and and I will abide in you, and you can just move right in. That's awesome. Then Jesus said these words: "Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you." I go to prepare a place for you. Now I'm going to add two words to that. Please don't judge me for adding to the scripture. Move in. Just move in. It's already there. It's already taken care of. You know what the Bible said? Listen to this one. This sort of bless you. Proverbs 18 and 10. Most of you can quote it. The name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous runneth into it and are saved. I'm going to add another two words to it. Move in. Just run into Jesus. You'll never be perfect. Don't even try to be. Strive to be, but don't be discouraged when you're not. But you can be saved. Just keep running to Jesus. Jesus said, I am your dwelling place. Don't you love it? Sister Chris, I want you to sing me a song right now if you would. Could you do that for me? <laughs> if John wants to come, that'd be great. Be super. Bro, that boy, if he ever grows up, he's going to learn how to play those John. Um, <laughs> bass player is not here. Just, I want you to stand with me, and she's going to sing. As she's singing, we're going to come up front, and we're just going to touch the hand of the Lord today in this service. As she sings, just a closer walk. That's my desire. I want a closer walk with you. Brother Willingham, I didn't see you. I didn't, forgot about you sitting there. If you want to play the bass, we'd love to have you play. In Jesus' name, just a closer walk. Hallelujah. Just a closer walk. Just a closer walk. Closer walk. Pray for that closer walk. Lord, just give me a closer walk with you. Lord, I'm going to die with you like the preacher said. In Jesus' name. Walk with me.